Somebody that I used to know is both one of music's greatest success stories and biggest mysteries at the same time. This was a song made by Gautier at his parents' home that went on to be a global phenomenon. I have a copy of it here, and here's everything he's made since. For an artist who started making music in his bedroom, it was a dream come true. But when it did, he turned down millions of dollars that the song made, and announced that there would be no more new music. What happened to Gautier? Like many young musicians, Gautier started making music at home in his bedroom. There are a few ways you can do this if you're on a budget, recording all the instruments yourself or using virtual instruments. But another way which Gautier used extensively is sampling. Sampling allows you to take an extract from an already existing song, and with a bit of manipulation, you can start to create something original of your own. But unlike many other musicians that use sampling, Gautier manages to really cleverly weave this together with songwriting. This makes perfect sense when you hear him talk about his influences. I guess I listen to lots of different kind of, I'd say, left field pop music. Or, look, some of it might be considered quite mainstream for some people, but I really like artists like Kate Bush and Peter Gabriel, mm -hmm. Depeche Mode, KLF, bands who kind of work within kind of pop music world, but I think do something really refreshing and exciting. But his greatest influence from his creative process came from sampling. Sample based artists have had, you know, quite an uh, sort of, uh, give me a lot, you know, kind of, ideas for how you can make music by pinching small bits of sound and collaging into new songs. This crossover between songwriting and sampling is clear just by listening to some of his early songs, like Learn A Little Given and Lovin', which contains a drum sample from the Renettes' Be My Baby. And Out Here In The Cold, which samples Nina Simone playing piano. And this do-it-yourself approach to music making stretched beyond the music itself, with Gautier hand-drawing the tracklist to all 50 copies of his debut EP. It's perfectly fine to aspire towards a more traditional route of having a team of people working in an expensive studio, but Gautier never worked like this, instead preferring to stick to his own path. And this isn't a bad thing. In fact, if you can do this in a creative way, it's much more authentic than trying to be something you're not. Yeah, so I kind of started just collecting anything and everything that looked interesting to me and that I had no idea what it sounded like. And this is where Gautier first found success, finding sounds and inspiration from his own life and turning this into a creative way of making music. And not only playing around with sounds and ideas, but transforming this into a finished product, all on his own. But it's also not fair to say that Gautier wasn't searching for mainstream popularity and success. He would send CDs of his music to every radio station and record label he could find, following up with a call after they'd been delivered. And after a couple of years of releasing some singles and demo EPs by himself, in 2003 he was offered his first distribution deal. So he compiled some of the music he'd made over the last couple of years, and released his debut album, Bored Face. Uh, the first album was kind of a result of maybe three years of just starting to discover sampling for the first time, okay. having a computer at home, that was my own that I could make music on for the first time and just making lots of tracks and I probably made 30, 40 tracks and then the 10 or 11 tracks that are on board face uh, you know, just felt like the right collection from yeah. everything I'd finished in that time. Although the album mostly stayed within an Australian audience, it was met with positive reviews and most importantly, it gave validation to Gautier's creative process. Everything seemed set for Gautier to continue making more music and to continue reaching a wider audience. But everything was about to change, and his creative process would have to change with it. In 2004, the year after his debut album was released, his parents decided to sell their house where Gautier had been living and making music. And this left him at a loose end. He spent the following year moving between different shared houses, taking his homemade studio with him, and working normal jobs to try and sustain his music making. Not only was it physically more difficult to find a consistent working environment, each space offered different acoustics and palettes of sound. If you're impressed by Gautier's creative process, my next video is gonna be on the Beatles' work ethic, so make sure you subscribe to see that. Gautier had an important strength, which was to find inspiration from the world around him and turn this into music. For many musicians or artists, limitations or barriers to creativity can lead to overthinking or making excuses. 
which is understandable if you're moving between different spaces and having to use different equipment. But what was so great about Gautier is that he realised that these limitations could actually be a source for creativity. And embracing and working within these limitations results in music that only he could have produced. His debut album was full of sounds from his parents' record collection and record shops in Australia. And his second album is full of sounds that reflect this difficult time, moving between shared houses and different jobs. Even the name of this second album, Like Drawing Blood, is a reference to the difficulty in just making it. Well, that, that album was obviously named after the suggestion that it was a difficult experience, that it was like, you know, yeah. taking a part of myself, a lifeblood. It was just, it was a hard album to write for me because almost heaps of times, at least every month in the maybe two years that I spent writing the record, I was ready to just kind of go, what am I doing? This is no good, or it's too hard, or I'm never going to, you know, make, finish an album. So it was quite a challenging thing to continue to go, this is worth keeping to do and, you know, keeping going with this. Like Drawing Blood gave Gautier the greatest commercial success he'd seen so far, with the album going platinum in Australia and winning a number of awards as well. Although he was yet to break through internationally, the success of the album exposed him to a new audience and allowed him to continue touring and also gave him the financial freedom that he'd been lacking so far in his career. I guess as an independent musician, I think over the last five years, putting out my own records, one of the things I found the hardest at the start, trying to do everything myself, was just, I don't know, getting access to things. But the real success for Gautier was that the album allowed him to establish a permanent home to make music. The only question now was, what lied ahead for Gautier? I'd just like to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, Lalal.ai. I'm so pleased to be working with a company that I actually use all the time. You may have noticed that within these videos I use the original music, but I remove the vocals so that it isn't too distracting. Lalal.ai allows you to isolate and extract a wide range of instruments, and I can honestly say it works so well, especially for musicians like Gautier who use sampling within their music. Let's see how well this works with this Gautier song. You didn't have to cut me off. Their latest AI tool allows you to upload a fully mixed song and change the voice. It's completely free to use. I'll put a link in the description so you can try it for yourself. Thanks to Lalal.ai for sponsoring this video. With a permanent space and growing audience, Gautier was able to spend more time crafting music than ever before. As always, this music would demonstrate Gautier's ability to take inspiration from his own life and turn this into music. Only this time, it would be more personal and introspective. His third and now final album, Making Mirrors, was in many ways a return to an earlier time in his life. The title is inspired by some of his father's artwork from the 1980s, and the artwork was again created by Gautier only this time in Photoshop, rather than hand drawing every copy. But there was one song in particular that captured this new era in Gautier's life. Somebody that I used to know. Like much of his earlier work, the song was crafted from a selection of samples. The opening guitar riff comes from Louis Bonfer's instrumental Seville. I'm honestly amazed how many samples are in this song and how well Gautier has used them. Considering most of them are from the 50s or 60s, they sound so good in this production. But the song also drew inspiration in another way. Gautier has repeatedly stated that the song isn't about any one particular person or breakup. It's a bit of a, a mixture of various reflections on relationships and experiences from over the years. There's an element of fiction in it as well, but again, it was a response, you know, the, what the song ended up being about was a response to a sound. Um, the little guitar riff that starts the song off was the first thing that I found. And I don't know, it had a certain hypnotic pull to it. And it was a response to that that made me start the kind of very low, reflective, melancholy verse lyric. The song is a two-part dialogue between Gautier and Kimbra, representing the two people going through a breakup. I didn't intend it to be a two-person song from the start, but when I sort of got to end, the end of writing the first chorus, um, it didn't feel like there was anywhere else for my character to sort of go. It didn't feel like there was any more story to tell. So that prompted me to um, to you know, write uh, an alternative perspective, the other side of the coin. The song was released as the second single from the album Making Mirrors, and at first it took a few weeks to climb the charts, not receiving that much airplay from radio stations. 
When it was released in the US, it debuted at number 91. But those who did hear it absolutely loved it, and it started to gain popularity. Ashton Kutcher and Katy Perry shared the song on Twitter, and the video gave the song a certain branding. It's quite unusual that you can share a single frame from a video and instantly know what the song is. That it, it hasn't been by any kind of um, conscious construction to try and fit the current mould of pop music. You know, it's um, it's taken me by surprise. I really didn't expect this song to sort of you know be a pop crossover song. It's really special. Everyone's connected with that song on a you know worldwide kind of scale um, and I still think back to that day when Wally came around with his mic you know to my house and we're sitting in my room talking about the track and I'm um, you know singing my vocal takes I wouldn't have had a clue that that song would be sitting up with Justin Bieber and you know, <laughs> Lady Gaga on the charts. The popularity of the song just continued to grow eventually reaching number one in 23 countries. The song won six ARIA awards and two Grammys and perhaps most impressive of all Prince said that he loved it. And the Grammy goes too. Oh, I love this song. Somebody that I used to know, Gautier. Somebody that I used to know made Gautier a global success. And then, nothing. There were some follow-up singles from the album, but there's never been another album since this one. And it's not that he just hasn't gotten around to releasing any new music yet. He has officially announced that there will be no more new Gautier music. So, what happened to Gautier? Well, as you may know, Gautier isn't his real name. His real name is Walter de Backer, or Wally for short. And Gautier is just a stage name that he uses for this one musical project. Similar to how Childish Gambino is a project of Donald Glover, or Tame Impala is Kevin Parker. And after the success of Somebody That I Used To Know, Wally returned back to another one of his musical projects, The Basics, which is a band he's been playing with since 2002. Almost as long as he's been working on Gautier. And actually, The Basics was expected to be a more commercially successful project than Gautier. Since the last Gautier album came out, they released two studio albums, plus an EP and a number of live albums. So Wally has definitely been busy with new music, just not as Gautier. For many artists, this meteoric success will be a springboard for more and more music. But Wally is actually hidden away from it. The video has over 2 billion views on YouTube, but he's turned off the ads, meaning he doesn't make any money from it. And the money that he does make, he has to give away 45% because he used samples. Gautier's success came from authenticity. It came from creating music about his life and using sounds from his life. Whether this was from the difficulty moving around when he was making his second album, or the more personal style of a breakup song like Somebody That I Used To Know, I have more and more people uh, telling me, you know, I must be so overjoyed and amazed by the success and the bigness, how big everything's getting, but you know, the bigger things get, um, the less likely they really are, ever are to be sustainable or to be, you know, personal. The life of fame and stardom wasn't what he wanted, it wasn't who he was, and it definitely wasn't musically inspiring. Perhaps this is why he's continued to make music, but with the basics instead. It seems strange because for so many musicians, it would be a dream come true for so many people to fall in love with your music. But it was this authenticity that gave Gautier such success in the first place. Perhaps maybe I feel a tinge of regret when I sense that um, when things get to a certain scale, when, when things get sort of maybe, maybe too big, um, it's really hard to keep it personal. I think there's a scale beyond which where you can't really truly communicate with a large number of people. If he was trying to please an audience, he likely never would have used these samples or turned the song into a duet to tell two sides of the story. Rather than Gautier trying too hard to make a follow-up album, instead he was content letting things be. I think there's really there's good things I've made in the past and I'm proud of most of what I've done, but I still don't think I've made a really great sounding record. No? So I'll keep aspiring to that. Maybe trying to do it in a way that goes back to being more independent at some stage, like smaller releases that are more one-off that maybe they're less pop, I don't know. I don't want to speak for him, maybe in the future he'll decide to release some new music again. But at least for now, we remember Gautier as being something genuine. And if he does decide to release some new music, we can be sure that it's an authentic insight into his life. Mm -hmm.